All right. We are going to go ahead and dive into this one here. So let me pull this up. We got my notes up here. Um, hey, so by the way, we are recording this. So if anybody's wondering about that, we will be recording this one and we will, of course, make that available. Um, all right, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in here. So I'm going to introduce a special guest here in a little bit. We have Salim Khatri with us today from Lavu. Uh, how's it going there, Salim? Good to see you, sir. Great. Super excited to be here again. Nice to see you. Yes, we uh, Salim and I have done some pretty interesting events over the years. And uh, I think as a result, we've seen uh, hundreds, if not thousands of restaurant locations uh, that have gone with uh, ISOs and agents rather than with Toast. So I'm pretty proud of that, actually. Uh, I know you That's are right. as well, Salim. So, That's right, uh, yep. Awesome. All right, great. So I'm going to dive in and talk about a few things here, and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll jump back in with Salim here in just a minute. Um, so I want to talk about competing with Toast in 2025, and this is really really important to me because you know we're we're using this one example here, and we're talking about the the Lavu deal that um, I worked with Salim on. Uh, really, it's been over a year ago now. And we're going to kind of get, get back into that and talk about that specifically. But from a broader perspective, you know, this idea of ISOs and agents, I think it's one of the most pressing issues today is just how do we compete with Toast? How do we compete with other, um, you know, large kind of technology companies out there that are, you know, taking care of their own payments? And they're really kind of cutting out that direct sales channel with agents and ISOs. And so I spent a, a ton of time really thinking about that problem and how we solve it. And I think if I could kind of today restate the problem a little bit, um, and give it to you in, in maybe a, a slightly different way. Um, I would say that there are three kind of issues here that we run into as we try to compete with Toast and you know uh, getting restaurant point of sale installed. And again, this goes for other verticals as well. Um, the first one is integration equals complexity. So, you know, again, we can go back in time. I think all of us could at least at least for me, maybe those some of you maybe are a little bit newer to the industry. Let me ask that question actually over in the the question box or the the chat box. Um, how many years have you been in the payment processing or point of sale industry? Just give me a number. Kind of just curious to see the uh, amount of kind of experience that we have here. Okay, so Eric with 13 years. Wow, Richard with 40 years. Um, Carla with four. Jeff with eight. Caleb with 13. Um, Charles 10. Tom 30. Holly seven. Chet, brand new. Welcome to the industry. Uh, Crystal with 12, Larry with 30, Eli with four, uh, Stephen with 20, Anastasia with 14, you know, so um, less than one year. Again, welcome to the industry, Alex, uh, Juan with 15. I can go on and on, right? So so we have a pretty wide kind of variety here, but I think a lot of us, I'm seeing a lot of these, you know, kind of 10 plus years. Um, I've been in the industry myself about 15 years. And when I first got started, right, there was a lot of these standalone terminals. And of course, this still exists today. I don't want to make it sound like this has totally gone away. But I think especially in, in verticals like the restaurant industry, we're just not seeing very much of that these days, right? We're not seeing very many restaurants where we go in and they've still got, you know, just a standalone terminal. The vast majority are looking for a point of sale solution. They're looking for integrated payments. And of course, this is a larger trend that deals with a lot of different verticals. But in the restaurant space in particular, we want this integration. Well, that integration equals complexity, right? And that's a challenge. I think for all of us, we're saying, hey, we want to build a big portfolio. We want to build a portfolio of restaurants. I have probably talked to, oh my goodness, I don't know, 50 agents in the last 12 months that have literally told me, you know what, uh, uh, James, I'm just... I'm done with, uh, you know, restaurant point of sale because they go and make a sale and it's like the worst day of their life is after they close the sale and they realize they have to install this point of sale system. Um, and who knows what network issues are going to come up and what hardware issues are going to come up. And so, you know, this idea though of, of the integration, just the idea, the core idea of saying, we want to take payments and we want to put it in a box inside of something else. It just leads to complexity. And I think all of us are, Facing that, I was working on a deal myself with a real large uh, uh, ISV recently, where we were doing their like subscription payments and things. And um, you know, this is a merchant that does seventy million dollars a year. And you know, no joke, it took like two months to pull together the right, you know, kind of gateway and, you know, and, and right vendors to be able to do this integration because of a platform they were using. So it's just, it's in payments right now, the integration equals complexity. And this is a, a challenge that all of us are facing. And it's something that we have to adapt to. Okay. The second one I have done here is verticalization. Okay. Verticalization. All right. Verticalization also equals complexity. 
here's this word again, complexity, right? What do I mean by this? Well, now people are not saying, okay, everybody you sell wants the same thing. Now, everybody you sell wants something a little bit different, right? They want a different feature than this other person wants. Um, and so we have this verticalization reality going on. And it's, again, it's very, very challenging because now we're not being asked just to be experts at payments. We're now asked to become experts at software and features and doing demos and all of these other things. And it can really become very challenging, especially for many of you that are still out there trying to sell different business types, which I would assume is most of you. So that, that's my next poll question here for you um, is how many verticals do you sell to? So you could just say all of them, you know, like all my local businesses, or maybe you have one or two that you put 90% of your focus in. So put that answer in there. Richard puts all, that's fine. So you could say all, all would mean I go after all the different types of businesses in my area. I'm trying to sell all of them. Or if again, if you're only going after one or two, give me a number or three or four, whatever it is. Right. Um, and then what I'm seeing is, you know, all, 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 um, here's one, all heavily restaurant. Jeff's going after two. Holly's going after all Larry's going after three. Um, so, right. And keep, keep giving me the answers. I'm just curious more of them for my own, you know, my own, uh, curiosity here, but, um, you know, what we're seeing here is, you know, even those of you that it's like, you know, Larry is like, well, I only go after three. Well, you know, three is a lot. You know what I mean? Like three is a lot. It's like, well, I sell restaurant and I sell auto repair and I sell hair salons. That's a lot, right? Like understanding what works with all of those different business types, what software is correct, um, what features they're going to care about, how to integrate the payments into it right? This is going to be challenging. Here's some more, uh, mostly restaurants, um, auto repair and restaurants, right? So a couple here, uh, Phil professional offices. Really cool. I like that. That's actually, a, that's a really underserved, uh, market there, Phil. I like that. So again, the idea here is we're having to make these difficult choices. I'm two thirds of you on this webinar, according to this chat are choosing to kind of go more after everybody, right? Um, and then the other third of you are still going after, it's not like you're going after one vertical, right? You're going after multiple verticals. Well, multiple verticals equals complexity now because we have all of these different solutions. And so this is a big challenge, I think, as we go into 2025, I think a lot of you are, are already starting to think about how am I going to adjust, right? How am I going to change uh, all of this? Well, there's one more big one that I have to cover here. Um, and that is installation, which definitely equals complexity, right? Um, and, you know, installation is like, you know, it's gone from this beautiful, I remember, well, I said it beautiful. I guess it wasn't that beautiful back in the day because the problem was back in when I started selling internet lines into the terminal wasn't like a big popular thing. So we were very concerned about things like the, the baud rate. Okay. Uh, some of you on here know what the baud rate is. Um, and we had to download to the terminal. And so we would go in and we would, but it was, it was a waiting game. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I had to really do anything. I just kind of had to go through and program the terminal, uh, and then sit there for like, you know, 45 minutes sometimes or 20 minutes, um, and wait for this terminal thing to download and then run a test transaction. And then once that was done, I mean, I considered that I had provided that merchant with a fantastic experience. Like I showed them how to run a credit card through the machine. That was it. Like, well done. I mean, I remember going to uh, dozens of different uh, restaurant, pizza shop type, you know, uh, businesses back when I started selling and put a terminal on the counter, did the download, or I, even better, I got to the point where I could do the download at my house and then I would take it out and it's ready to go. And I would set it up and I'd run a test transaction. And, and in their mind, I was, a, I was a genius. I was a payments genius. I did a fantastic job, right? I got them all set and ready to go. Um, now, not the case. Why? Because Again, point of sale. Now, again, I don't want to discount. I know a lot of you are setting up maybe a, a Clover Mini and there's, you know, but even that it's like, well, yeah, but what, what features do they want? What apps do they want? How do they work? You know, so it, it's just becoming more complex. And so installation now becomes this kind of nightmare for the salesperson a lot of times to figure out how do we do menu builds? What do we do with modifiers? You know, what do they want for their user permission sets? And then it's like, okay, once we figure all that out, we got to install the hardware. We got to do the networking. We have to make sure that the cables are running correctly. So there's all of this complexity. And so what I hear more and more from salespeople in our industry is, there's a lot of complexity. And so I've been talking about this for several years. And, um, you know, what I've been talking about is, you know, redefining the agent's role and redefining technology partnerships um, in our space. And I think 
all of you, this is kind of what you need to be thinking about, right? As we go into 2025 and you're trying to compete with, with players like Toast and you're like, man, I want to build a big restaurant portfolio. Well, okay, but you're going to have complexity on top of complexity on top of complexity. So what do you do? Well, you have to redefine your role, right? And you have to redefine what partnership looks like. In the past, it's been all about, you know, a partner is the payment, you know, a partner is the ISO that can give me the highest split and make sure that the terminal arrives on time, right? Well, you know what? I think our partnership concept is going to have to evolve and it's going to have to change because, you know, those scenarios worked when it was like, well, we don't even really care what that, what that ISO, you know, does. Like it's, you know, we're putting a terminal in place. Like just ship me the terminal. I'm good to go. Leave me alone. Leave the merchant alone. We're fine. If they reach out once a year, make sure you pick the phone up, right? Like that was the expectation. It was this very kind of low bar that we wanted people to clear. Well, now... We're in a new reality. We're going after multiple verticals with all this complexity. So now we're trying to think about partnerships. So bringing this full circle before I introduce Salim, um, I started working with LaVu because I wanted to figure out how to solve this problem. And so I was already consulting uh, for LaVu at the time, and we were implementing compliant dual pricing. Uh, LaVu has been around forever, and they were already a huge market leader uh, competing head-to-head -head with Toast. Um, and doing very well at it. But we were like, Salim and I were talking and, you know, saying, man, it'd be amazing if we could actually leverage these agents. But we're like, that that legacy model probably isn't going to work as well with this new technology thing. And so we rolled a program out um, a little over a year ago, I believe it was now. Um, and then as a result, now we've had this year to look back. And so then uh, uh, Salim actually reached out to me recently and he and I were just talking and kind of reminiscing about what we thought the program was going to be initially what we rolled out initially, I did a bunch of training and all that, and they put together a fantastic comp program and all this stuff. And then it was like, what did we learn? Like, what are the things now looking back that it's like, okay, wait a second, it's time to do a little bit of a reset and say, hey, we want to update this program to be even better at accomplishing the objectives of saying the, you know, the independent sales agent that's, you know, out selling in the field, that merchant services rep, what's the feedback we've been given? What do they want? And so we re-engaged and we're talking about this. And uh, and so this event, of course, is sponsored by LaVu, but I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation with Salim today, just talking about what have we learned in the last year? Because it is a challenge. And this is something I think many of you maybe don't fully understand is that these technology companies like LaVu and many others, they are technology companies. Their primary purpose is serving these merchants. And historically, these companies have always been driven by inside sales inbound leads, right? That's that's what happens. And what we're asking is we want these companies to embrace the 1099 um, agent model, the lifetime vested residuals, all the things we care about. Um, and at the same time, we have to be willing to adjust because they're going to adjust their model for us. We've got to be willing to adjust a little bit for them and start to figure out what does this new reality look like? So with all that in mind, I'm super excited to interview my good friend, Salim. Uh, so Salim, if you want to get your camera back on there, <clears throat> I will dive into some questions here. Let me pull this slide up here. Okay. So Salim, we already kind of introduced you today, but just give us a real quick, what's your role at LaVu and uh, kind of what's your, what's your day-to-day -day life like there at, uh, at LaVu POS for our listeners? Absolutely. So I, uh, I'm the, the coach here at LaVu at, at all, <laughs> uh, all my amazing teammates that we've uh, been fortunate enough to recruit over here uh, do an amazing job. Um, and uh, really, really grateful for the opportunity to be back here. I think you've been, you've been very modest. You know, James is the godfather of the, of the dual pricing program. And uh, when we first started talking, it was to get dual pricing into LaVu right. because we thought it would really help restaurants at a time when they needed to figure out new ways to adapt technologically to, to drive more profits given COVID and staffing shortages and inflation were around the horizon. And I can confidently say we have the best, you know, dual pricing program in the industry. So, so thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I know we're going to dive into this more in detail later, but just out of curiosity at a high level today, what roughly what percentage of your new deals on like a monthly basis are dual pricing versus traditional? I would say 90, over 99% of our deals are are dual pricing. It's like, it, it's like it, people talk about it in the hallway, like, oh, this guy wanted to do a, a traditional pricing deal. And we're like, why? And it's usually because we <laughs> didn't do a good job educating them, right? Or they're right. afraid, what are my customers going to think? Like, I built my business on these people. I'm, I'm loyal to them. And it's really helping them understand yeah. how to how to sell uh, for that because it helps the it helps the restaurant so much so yeah. much so that we're able to go out in the market and offer a guarantee that 
if you don't if we don't at least double your profits in the first 30 days then your money we're giving you your money back like not many other uh pos companies can right. say that right you know and one thing i for those of you that have been in the industry a little while right like just like soaking that percentage in for a second you know what i mean like yeah Oh man, like Salim, I, I feel like probably three, maybe four years ago, I remember thinking, I wonder if restaurants will ever adopt dual pricing. Like it just didn't seem, right. you know what I mean? I was like, I don't know. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. Maybe, you know? That's right. That's and right. Then, yes. And then today it's like 99%. I mean, it's just insane. Um, And I know a lot of our listeners are all about the dual pricing. One thing that was really cool, I remember back, you know, I had this kind of uh, light bulb moment when you and I were talking way back when yeah. we yeah. were talking about the pay at the table. Right. And, right. That's and we were right. And we realized like, oh, wait a second, we can actually do dual pricing in a compliant way for a restaurant. It was really a, yeah. I remember yes. that it was a really cool yes. moment. And so I, I know a yeah. lot of- uh, It's all about, it, it, no, you, you've helped so much. And it's really, sorry to cut you off. It's all right. about how you frame it to the customer, right? Yes. And just like all the stuff that you talked about, complexity, integrations, um, restaurants are so incredibly complex. Yes. Like these people work so hard to make, you know, 3% margins. Uh, and then they got to deal with all these people who may or may not show up to work and dishwashers and pay $25 an hour for, for a pimply faced kid to answer the phone. Like it's ridiculous the number of things that these people have to do. So yeah, when we go, we go with a, a service mindset because we know what do they do? They serve, they serve food and they provide service. So if we're not providing them service, better than the service they're providing their patrons, we shouldn't be in business. Right. Yeah. And that's it. the way we think about things. I love it. All right. So let's dive in here. I got some questions for you. So first of all, let's go really big picture here with a couple questions. Um, what is the current state of restaurant point of sale in the U.S. market strategically? Um, what are the biggest challenges facing restaurants? You alluded to a couple of minutes ago, but how do you see the restaurant POS market today? We're at an amazing inflection point for the restaurant POS market only because uh, the macroeconomic conditions have dictated that. So when when people are forced to change and people are forced to adapt, and if they don't, they go out of business, they are willing to have a conversation with you. So now more than ever, people are willing to have a conversation with us. And I'll yeah. give you folks an obvious secret, which is if you want to learn to sell against Toast, Lightspeed, Clover, et cetera, go to g2.com, go to Captera, go to Trustpilot and pull up the reviews and sort by most recent. And the customers or the prospects will tell you what are the problems with those POS systems. And that's what you go and say, I can solve these problems. And they will give you, uh, they will give you, they will lend their ear to you. That's where we are. Toast yeah. has gotten too big for who they are. Yes. They're a great product. Our speed is insane. We have done 60, we did 60 releases in 23. We'll do another 70 releases in 24. But when you get to that size, it's really hard to provide really good customer service. It's really yeah. hard to, to, to innovate because there's just so much red tape. Right. Um, and that's where we are with so many companies. Lavu is on an amazing trajectory. And so we're able to capitalize on those things. Yeah. And I think it's interesting too. Toast is like the size they're at and how fast they got there. I mean, yes, right. It's yeah. like they, they overspent to, to buy this growth and they did buy it. I mean, right. you know, congrats to them for buying this growth, but yeah. one of those things yeah. sometimes you catch a tiger by the tail and it's like, well, yes. wait a second. Does this, you know, Lavu has been, how long has Lavu been operational? I can't remember now. Lavu has been around uh, since 2010. So we were the first iPad based point of sale. Um, and we obviously caught that wave. That's why we're in over 75 countries today. That's right. why we're in Apple's cafeterias internationally and in like Japan and all these other countries where Apple has corporate offices. Right. And, uh, and obviously Toast has done a great job, nothing to take away from them. Um, but it's different. Like restaurants yeah. are highly referenceable. When you ask a restaurant owner, if they'll consider you, they'll say, well, who do you know in Gary, Indiana, on this street, right. uh, on this side of the, uh, on this side of the fence, who right. shares my same last name? You're like, I don't know anybody, <laughs> and so you have to figure out other ways to sell to them, right? You have to show right. them that value. It's really important. Yeah, cool. Hey, by the way, just to pause for one second, as we dive into these questions, I know a lot of you are asking questions now. Please keep doing that. Um, there's actually a question box you can put them in, or if you want to just do it in the chat, I'm fine either way. We're, we have a Q&A session right after this. We'll make sure we have some time to run through all those. And, and uh, Salim and I will do our best to, to address those questions. So, all right. So we, we've touched. Yeah. So Salim, we touched on um, Toast a little bit already. You mentioned yeah. how Toast is just, it's different, right? How is mm -hmm. Lavu different from Toast? And specifically like as agents are getting out and talking about Lavu, for instance, how are they yeah. positioning themselves with someone who's maybe considering toast? What are the what are the key talking points? 
Yeah, I mean, look, there's three there's three legs of the stool that we're continuing to invest in every single day, which is one is customer service. We talked a little bit about that. Right. We have a 92% CSAT rating. So if you call, somebody will pick up the phone within 30 seconds. And and our goal, like I look at it every single day, what is our first call resolution? It's pretty close to 80%. I want to get that close to 90%. That means when you call, we fix your problem. Like we don't say we're going to call you back or pass you on. And that is one of the big issues with Toast right now. The yep. customer service. Um, that's number one. Number two is reliability. So with restaurants, in order for you for them to be able to use the system successfully, guess what? It has to work. And so Labu does have Labu's had its fair share of issues. It's technology. We're on AWS, but we've spent so much time and money beefing that up even more. And so when a system like Square or somebody goes down because of a hack or whatever it is, Labu has ninety nine point nine nine percent uptime, which means restaurant owners get their money. Patrons pay and waiters and waitresses get their money too, which is really important. Right. Look, let me, I, want, I have, I digress for one second. Yeah, one please. area that people don't think about is the restaurant staff. The restaurant staff for an SMB doesn't make the decision, but the manager is so critical to the yes. long term longe- longevity of the POS staying in the restaurant. Uh, if you're in a restaurant and it's been six months and everything's going great, owner's happy, GM is happy. And all of a sudden, GM has to move out of the state for whatever reason, kids, whatever. Now you got a new GM, and guess what? They've used to a, a different POS system. They will find every single way to get you out of there. Right. And so you have to continuously be, be building relationships. So that's reliability. And then number number three, which we'll talk about today, is profitability. Hmm. So I told you I can guarantee 2x. Most of the time, we we get people to grow their profitability 4 to 5x. Right. So we get them to go from 3% to 12 to 15% operating margins, which is pretty awesome. Right. And so that allows our agents and that allows Lavu to charge various rates uh, and have higher take rates when it comes to payment processing because we're more creative and and, and do things like that. Um, Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. For those of you too listening, if you, and I'll put this link up at the end, but if you go to ccsalespro.com slash LAVU, L-A-V-U, um, I actually did a training that will make available to all of you for free. Um, it, it was, you know, now been about a year ago. Um, but, you know, we talk a lot about that. I think, Salim, a lot of the agents and ISOs don't really understand the challenge of owning and running a restaurant where, you know, imagine if out of $100, you only keep three. Like, that's a big, it doesn't take a very, doesn't take a very big mistake to go from making three yeah. to making none. Right. That's right. And so yeah. when you can take them from making three to making 15 out of every hundred, that's, that's a huge, that's huge right. thing. And yeah. I know a lot of your yeah. kind of online branding is about that. You guys talk a lot about the yes. profitability piece, which I love. Um, yeah. Okay. So we talked about the restaurant. Let's talk about, uh, well, first of all, tell us what Lisa stands for. So everybody knows. Yeah. 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 So John Ward, who's on this call, you can't see him. John Ward's our VP of sales. Some of you have talked to him. Lisa is Lavu independent sales agent, right? And so for so long, James, you've been doing these wonderful webinars with all your content and stuff. All of you folks have been selling credit card uh, terminals to people in exchange for basis points, and you've been disenfranchised by people like Toast. And so we want to partner with you because we want to give you ammunition to sell against Toast and other POS systems and offer these restaurants an integrated system that solves our, their complexity and solves their problems. And that's what Elisa is, Lavu Independent Sales Agent. And I see somebody else is saying, hey, my name is Lisa. We got Elisa <laughs> over here too at Lavu, a sales rep. So we, uh, we love great. that. That's great. Yeah. So so how has it been going? So we've had, I think, I believe it's been over a year. Is that right? That we've yeah. Over, yeah. 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 Right? So how, like, give us yep. the, give us the high level. I mean, you know, and again, I, I, it's, it's easy, I think for, for everybody to just kind of, you know, miss this, but it's like, there aren't actually very many all in one point of sale solutions with their own payments and everything else who have a lifetime vested residual, you know, true, yes. we would consider a true yes. 1099 agent program. So obviously there would be challenges because we're doing something brand new, but like, how has it gone over the last year? What have you learned from all of this? Um, we've learned that. We, I think we got the economics right, uh, which was uh, which was good. We wanted to be the leader in that space, and we wanted to make sure we were treating the the, the agents with respect, the respect that they deserve, uh, and they were rewarding them financially. The things that we didn't get right were kind of was the onboarding, right? So initially, we were we we did not mandate or or choose to partner with an installer to have these complex systems installed by a professional. Like everybody thinks that they're really good at hooking up the modem that you were talking about. Right. But when you have 35 terminals, six six terminals, you know, 29 handheld devices, 
six kitchen display systems, online ordering, dual pricing, you need a professional over there to make sure everything is working, right? Because this is not Costco. It's not right. a managed IT system. It's a little restaurant that happens to throw off a million dollars of cash on their monthly basis. So we got the, we got the onboarding right, and we've basically established a number of different systems. So we went from the sale, we went from onboarding, then we went to fulfillment. So we had partnered with somebody else before, and it didn't work out. I, you know, I wish them the best. We, we changed that out. We made sure that our, our back end was solid. All the equipment was wor- working out of the box, and we tested it. And then now we're at the reporting phase. The reporting phase, a lot of the agents were asking for more transparency and more visibility to be able to track on a monthly, on a daily basis, how those deals were doing. Now right. we have that as well. So my job as a CEO is obviously the vision, mission, and the strategy, but our goal is to continually push the problem down the line, right? When you solve one problem, another one pops up, and then we got to go and solve that problem. So I'm, I'm very confident about where we are today. Um, and it's almost half our month, half our MRR. Uh, yeah. I, I'm from a new from a new booking spaces, which is which is just amazing. It is. We've, it, we're scratching the surface. Yeah, I believe I agree, and it's crazy to think you started like you know a year ago with that channel and where yeah. it's at, where it's at today. Two other yeah, things, it's amazing. Like, two other things I wanted to share about this, Salim, that I was thinking about. Yeah. You know, one is I think everybody on here has seen the video that I did uh, several, maybe three months ago. I did a video where um, I actually documented myself going out and selling a Lavu point of sale to a restaurant, and mm-hmm. you know I have to admit you know, my expectations were, you know, I've done a lot of POS deals over the years and I've been pretty involved with the deals that I've done and they were generally a mess. I mean, I'm going to be honest, you know, now I got very good at at fixing the mess, but it was always a mess, you know? And, you know, I thought, you know, how is this going to go? And, and when I, you know, realized, okay, now Lavu's does the install themselves. Mm -hmm. I've had bad experiences with that as well, to be honest with other companies, you know what I mean? Of like, they bring in a third party, they don't have any idea what they're doing. Um, this was amazing. This experience was actually really, really good. I went out, I made the sale. The, I got, I actually got them really excited about it. The demo was done by somebody at Lavu. So yep. I didn't have to like, you know, I mean, I know generally restaurant POS, but I didn't have to become like a Lavu expert. The demo was done. I went back, kind of closed the deal and, and just, you know, cleaned up a few details and then scheduled the install. The installer came out. Um, I showed up, and I kind of stood around for like, I don't know, a half hour. And then I was like, what am I doing here? Like this guy is just installing this system. And the and, and he was like really good with the owner. The owner was like working with him. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take off. So, uh, you know, then I came back like at the, you know, towards the end of the day when they were kind of finishing up, um, they hit a snag with the, uh, the one kitchen display. <clears throat> and oh, so, sure. yep. And then very quickly got a new one, like overnighted out. It was fine. It worked fine even without that, but they overnighted it and, and, and came back and made sure that was done correctly. Um, and then I went back and I uh, uh, did an interview with the owner. I think it was maybe two weeks later. <laughs> Got great feedback from him. So that was a really good experience for me to kind of see this new reality that you have. And I love it because it was great for me. I like, you know, I'm pretty busy these days. And I was like, well, this is fantastic. I made the sale. I did. They did the demo. They did the install. It was really nice. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then I think the other thing that's really been interesting for me recently is just seeing, <clears throat> you know, whenever an agent reaches out to me, and says, James, I have this issue with Lavu because, you know, I promoted you guys. And so people will reach out. I have yeah. never had an issue yet where when I actually reached out to your team that we didn't resolve it, it was always like, hey, this is an honest mistake or an issue with the merchant or there was a, a miscommunication. And, and early on, like you said, it was all about the install, you know, and yes. was, the, yes. the agent was like, I was like, dude, no, you can't you can't use that hardware like, you know, and so it was that kind of stuff. But it's like, I feel like that's gotten so much better as well. Now I'm getting less and less of that. And I think it's just it's all kind of ironing out. So I guess my my big question to all that is what's the new role for the agent? So help us understand what are yeah. the non-negotiables, right? Like what, what does it mean for an agent in this industry to go sell La Vu? What are the non-negotiables for them? You know, so we, you talked a little bit about this earlier. La Vu takes a very hands-on approach to, to, to working with the agent's merchant, right? And I use those words very carefully because we want to make sure the agent is happy. In order for the agent to be happy, the merchant, the restaurant has to be installed right. correctly. Everything has to run. So we take a done for you approach, right? We're all salespeople here. So everybody understands that we're done, done, the, the term done for you. You basically bring us the lead. You can s- sit on the call if you'd like. Uh, we all agree on the terms. The agreement is signed. Payment is made. You can be as involved or you cannot be involved. Um, and then you can feel free to check in with with the restaurant uh, and us. And if there's any escalation or anything like that needs to be done, it comes to Lavu. But 
we don't want you getting calls at 11 o'clock at night if there's an issue, right? And that's that's the way we structure our program versus the complexity of all the things that you were talking about earlier. We want to take care of all that. So what's the number one thing we all try to buy, which is time, right? So you have time back with your with your friends and family. Yep, I love it. Um, so okay, like a couple of things I want to cover, and then we'll get. I know there's a ton of questions, so we'll we'll get to those in a minute sure. again. If you have if you have questions, just keep asking those. Uh, if you want to learn more, by the way, and you have to run or something, make sure and go to ccsalespro.com/lavu. Even if you fill that out before, maybe it was way back, and you're like, hey, I, this sounds interesting. I want to try this again. Um, just fill that form out again, and the Lavu team can reach out. And again, you'll get a free training program that I put together with Lavu um, in partnership um, over a year ago. It's a pretty cool program. So um, you can take a look at that. So um, let's talk about dual pricing. So I want to I want to skip to that. So we we kind of alluded to it earlier, uh, Salim. But you know, sure. how has because this is something that's so interesting to me. I have a lot of conversations these days with software companies and they get excited about the idea of surcharging or dual pricing, but they don't mm -hmm, think of it holistically mm -hmm. as like, how could it impact the overall model with hardware, software, everything else? Talk about how does Lavu view dual pricing and, you mm -hmm. know, how does it work in your kind of overall reseller program strategy? Yeah. So look, dual pricing is, we think it's a, it's a core tenant to what we do uh, because there's value to the actual restaurant. We're no longer a commodity. Um, we do we do also value uh, sub subscription software fees as well, right. um, but like I said, like nine nine point nine deals out of ten have have dual pricing. the The thing with Lavu is because we want to make restaurants more profitable, and they don't want to pay and want to be nickel and dime for other things. There's an opportunity with dual pricing to potentially raise a rate from what you might see out in the world wild today at three and a half or four to potentially even five. So we have a lot of reps who are doing deals at 5% comfortably. Now, normally, if you didn't give the restaurant value, another rep could walk in or Toast could walk in and say, hey, why are you paying, why are you paying or passing on 5%? Well, if you're not offering them value and you're not giving them tools and software that back up that 5% where they don't actually have to pay a thousand dollars a month for it, which they would have to pay on toast, then they would leave. But Laboo's strategy is to give them so much value. And oh, by the way, they don't have to pay for it. And oh, by the way, their customers doesn't have to pay for it where the agent's happy, Laboo's happy and the restaurant's happy. So it's, that's, yeah. that's the way we structure our program. Yeah. And I think one of the other really interesting things about it is again, th this is, and I, I get to do a whole podcast on this, but it's so interesting to me too. When you think about just um, dual pricing, compliance, visa regulations, all this stuff, when we get into this software world, everything changes. We have, you know, in our world of the terminal, we have all these problems because it's like, well, is it really dual pricing? Well, mm -hmm. according to visa, it's not because, you know, we are just adding something on or we're changing the price of the terminal. Yeah. But Right. When we're talking yeah. about pay at the table, when we're talking about a point of sale environment, now all of a sudden we can have a true two price system with menu, with handhelds, with receipts, yes. with everything. And I know you guys have yes. spent a ton of time and money. Honestly, I think you guys have probably put more time and money into dual pricing than any software company I know, because you literally yeah. have changed like every interface that has to do with pricing to make it a truly That's compliant right. solution. So 100%. Yeah, so. There's a lot of, I mean, Toast has dual pricing, but everything is like manual. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, other people have other people try to do. It. I know Clover has some apps that do that as well. Right. Like dual pricing is integrated into the company's culture. Like it is everybody yes. knows about dual pricing from a sales rep to the person that cleans the office. Like everybody knows about dual pricing and it permeates through the entire stack. It's yeah. not just a checkout screen thing. It goes through the entire system. And that's when you know it really benefits and it has true value to the customer. Right. In the reporting, everything is everything is built in. Fantastic. Okay. My last question for you, and then we're going to get to these other questions. Cause I know there's, there's a lot yeah. of them. Um, my last question for you is, you know, you and I had these conversations way back, like over a year ago about this kind of coup de gras of like, oh man, if you could go into a restaurant and just say, Hey, this is free. Right. Right. Yeah. Like you get yeah, your yeah, hardware, yeah. you get your software, you get your payment processing and it's all included because of dual pricing and like, Hey, we're going to make all this margin. Mm -hmm. Um, how has that gone? I mean, I think there's been some positives and negatives to that. I think some mm -hmm, agents have found mm -hmm. better ways to do that. Maybe restaurants don't care quite as much. I'm just kind of curious to get yeah. your thoughts. What are your thoughts about that approach in general? And how should agents be looking at that and potentially adjusting their strategy as they move forward? You know, so there's, if you just, if you compare that to software fees, right? So right. you have software fees, which are contractual or highly predictable, and then you have payments revenue. 
the reason why software is more coveted, software fees are more coveted versus payments revenue is payments has volatility. So I live in Tampa. We have a number of amazing restaurant customer merchants here in Tampa. And for those of you who know, over the last couple of days, we've had a really, really bad hurricane here. And you should see the pictures of some of our largest restaurants, like totally decimated. And we're going to give them credits and we're going to help them. We, we want to be good partners. And we make a lot of money on payments for those customers. But if nobody is going to eat at those restaurants, they're not going to have payment volume. If they don't have payment volume, we don't make money, right? So right. I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to be 100% payments focused because of that volatility. That's number one. Number two is the merchant could not, there's always, a, there's always a scenario where a merchant has paid you something, they've signed a contract, they're onboarded, and they're all set up, and then they never go live. And if you're only making money on payments, you're 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 out of luck, right? And right. so it's always good to have a little bit of skin in the game, in my opinion, even if it's like a token amount. Right. And that's the way that we do things at Livre. We want people, we want people to win. Like, don't get me wrong. Right. But at the same time, in order for us to be successful and provide this service, we think a good, you know, balance is, yeah. is needed. Yeah. And you know what I heard from a lot of agents, Salim, was um, you know, when you go, when you do that approach, it puts the focus very much on payments which yeah, isn't, isn't right. really best. I mean, you know, really when you're going in, you want to be talking more about the software, the value yeah. of that. And, and of course the sure. payments, you know, you know, to me, it's almost more like the pitch that seems to work best is kind of like, Hey, don't worry about the payments. We've got that covered. We do this dual pricing thing and you won't even pay it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. and then we focus, but we're still saying, but there are software costs and we have this hardware. Let me explain how this is. And I know you guys have programs with the hardware that I'm sure will come up in the questions here that you know you, you sure. spread that cost out and make it a monthly cost. So there, Absolutely. there, are, these, there yeah. are these recurring monthly costs for software and hardware. And I know you have yeah. programs where you can eat that as part of like a scheduling yeah. cost. But I think That's it's right. interesting to see like you got to be careful because what you charge for is what the the merchant is going to assume is important and valuable. Yes, so if that's you don't exactly charge right. for software, it's like, well, I, you know, and again, I was the big proponent of that back in the day, but now I haven't talked to a lot of agents and being out in the field myself selling it. It was like, I, I don't know. I didn't really like that. I actually would much rather talk about it again, kind of dismiss the, the payments as like, we take care of this. It's amazing. You save all this money. Mm -hmm. We don't worry about that. Let's focus on the software and hardware, but then actually charging yeah. for that, I think makes a lot of sense. So, And it's all about value, right? Like if you take a $100,000 TPV monthly TPV restaurant who may not be super educated and let's just say they're paying all in 3%. So that's right. three grand of processing fees and other fun fees. And yeah. then they're paying like 400, four or $500 in SAS. That's $3,500. So we're going to say, Hey, we're going to get rid of that $3,000. Right. Oh, by the way, we're going to upgrade all your hardware. Oh, by the way, we're going to install it and give you 24 seven customer service where when you call, you're not going to have to talk to a bot. You'll talk to somebody within 30 seconds and you'll pay, you'll save $3,000 or, or more than $3,000. Right. Like, do you, why wouldn't you do this? It's like a right. slam dunk, right? right? And then you, you can almost get into the too good to be true scenario when yes. you say, and oh, by the way, we don't even charge you software and hardware fees. It's like, ah, right, right, really? right. They right. got to pay something. Yeah, they got to right, pay something. Right. But for, yeah. let's just say it was $500 on the high side. That's 500 of hardware and software versus $3,600. Right. Um, plus all those amazing pro other problems solved. Like it's, yeah. it, it's a win. I right. love it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start in the Q&A log, but if you did yours in the chat, I'll get to yours in just a second. Um, first of all, um, before we dive into this really quick, I want to give everybody this link one more time. Go to ccsalespro.com slash LAVU, L-A-V-U. Many of you right now are asking about, hey, how do I get a demo of LAVU? How do I sign up? How do I get trained? ccsalespro.com slash LAVU. Just fill the form out and uh, LAVU will get back to you there. Um, and I will be sending out the recording. Uh, I know a lot of you asked that as well. That'll probably come out here in the next couple of days. So, all right. First question, which I, I figured this would pop up here, um, is LaVu processor, uh, you know, agnostic, uh, you know, or do you have your own and then how does that work as far as residual? So, um, you know, talk to us a little bit, cause I know this was a big thing early on that, that you and I had a lot of discussions about LaVu ended up rolling out their own payments. Talk about why you've done that and, and kind of how that's worked versus I know you used to do more of a processor agnostic approach. You know, when we were processor agnostic, it's not that we're we're against any of our, our processor friends. It's just it was really hard to streamline and, and provide a consistent service. So as you get bigger and as you get of more scale, you think about business as a continuous set of activities that just happen to make you money. And so if I can just push a button and all these things happen, the exact same thing happens every single time with and remove the variability from that those set of activities, 
we all do much better and I can invest more and just continue to accelerate. And that was our reason for it, right? And we want to put everybody on the same platform so that we can we can manage it better and give our customers a consistent experience. Yeah, and I was a huge proponent of this from day one because I really feel like, again, we have to remove some of this complexity. It's just too much. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, do you use this gateway? It's like, well, if we do that and then the gateway has a problem, whose problem is it? Is it Lavu's problem? Is it the gateway's problem? No, it's probably going to be the agent's problem. You know, it's like, no, mm-hmm. like, yeah. stop. Like, yeah. let's just make it all all one thing and it's all integrated. Yeah, that's right. And I think, I think, Salim, the reason that agents, some of them still will cling to that is because of this concern around residuals. Can you kind yeah. of clarify to them how the residuals yeah. work as far as lifetime vested? And, you know what I mean? Just talk about that at a high level yeah. so they kind of understand that part of it. Yeah, so it, it is lifetime vested. Um, and my, it's something that we've discussed internally. Um, if you do decide to sell your your um, your residuals, then, you know, Lavu would have an opportunity to purchase it at the purchase price that you you decided on with the other party. Um, and then one of the big things is we people want to bring our book over from Clover and wherever else that they're using, but they're getting a really good split. So, uh, James, I'm glad you brought that up. We will match that split. Not only will we match that split, so let's say it's 90-10. Obviously, we have to verify that. But then we're giving you your time back because a lot of times when people have a 90-10 on Paradise or whatever it is, they are the first call. So Bob is calling them when, and when and when they're saying there's something wrong with the menu or there's an issue, like you are the first call, which can be a little frustrating and unscalable if you're a one person shop, right? Or even if you have two or three people. So not only will you'll keep your 90, but we'll take the call. And that I think that's really, really important uh, to, to the folks on this on this Zoom. Absolutely. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's a really cool thing that you guys have, have, have rolled out because again, I know a lot of people do are in that situation where they want to roll something over. They realize, hey, I've got this clover in there, but it's not it's not really purpose built for this merchant that I'm you know got. Yeah. Um right. but yeah, they they've got that really great split. They want to bring it over. And and again, you know, we're talking about lifetime vested residuals. Reach out mm-hmm. and talk to the team at LaVu, just like any other processor. You talk to them about your your current residual splits and what you have going on, how many deals you're going to bring. And they'll, of course, take all that into account when they negotiate that with you. Um, several of you, again, are kind of asking, hey, do I need to register? I did it last year. Yes. Okay. And the reason I say that yeah. is, otherwise, I mean, feel free to reach out if you have a contact there. But if it was a year ago, probably best to just go fill the form out. That way somebody can reach out to you. So ccsalespro.com slash LaVu, L-A-V-U. Um, let's see here. Uh Okay, we got that. Again, some of these questions, if it's really super specific thing just for you, I'll probably just have Lavu. Uh, I'll send all these over to Lavu and ask them to reach out on those. Um, yeah, a lot of people agreeing with the issues that they've had with uh, installs and uh, yes. all of that. Um, Larry says, uh, I do all of my own POS installs training. And I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> so oh, yeah. apparently, Larry, we're on the right track. Yeah, yeah, I see that. You already responded to that one. So uh, let's see here. Um, okay. So talk about the process a little bit, Salim, a lot of questions. I'm trying to summarize some of these. So questions around, um, what happens? They go, they fill the form out. They're brand new. They've never sold LaVu before. What are you guys providing to them as far as Lisa program for all of that? Yeah. So we will, we will provide them a demo account. We'll provide them with marketing collateral, uh, even a marketing website so that they can direct traffic over there and we can collect leads. Or if they're, you know, if they're that you have your own lead system, or it's even ad hoc with friends and family, whatever it is, we'll we'll introduce you to an account executive, and that account executive will be essentially your your partner, your business partner here. And so whenever you get a a restaurant that's interested, you can do the demo, or again, you can just pick up the phone, schedule a time with our team, and we'll do the demo, and we'll literally take it over for you. I mean, you can be as involved in as involved or as not uh, as you as you'd like. So. Uh, yeah, we try what, to make it a very, very good experience. Yeah, that's what what I did was I scheduled a demo and then I I was on the demo, which was nice mm-hmm. because I had some notes from the conversation I'd already had with the restaurant owner. So I was able to bring up yeah. some concerns and, hey, don't forget, what about the DoorDash? And, you know, because they were having an issue. They were getting their DoorDash orders from a fax machine. <laughs> and so, oh my gosh, yeah. so that literally, so I, they showed me their fact. They're like, yeah, this fax machine. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I didn't know anybody even had a fax machine anymore. Um, But yeah, that's yeah. what they were doing. So I brought that up on the demo and I had no idea what Lavu did about that, but it was great because I brought that up and then, yes. and then the Lavu rep was able to show, oh yeah, here's how we handle all that. So I, yeah, anytime I, you can bring as an agent, anytime you can bring like issues or prep our team in advance, which you'll have an opportunity to do, even if it's like tidbits, like DoorDash fax machine or using um, using Shift 4 from 1986, like the first Harbor Touch ever known to man. Let us know. We right. know exactly what to do with those uh, right. sound bites. 
Yeah, and I enjoy, I liked being on the demo as well because it did help me to be able to kind of then go follow up with the merchant after and and, and I kind of knew what was talked about and what the issues were. So I, I think that was a pretty cool. And it was cool too to just kind of learn more about the system, uh, which was sure. neat. Um, you mentioned a couple of websites they could go to to research problems merchants have with Toast and others. Uh, can you give that yeah, again? Yeah, yeah uh, Captera, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A, captera.com. Uh, so we're ranked number one uh, restaurant point of sale over there. Um, uh, Trust Pilot is another one, T-R-U-S-T-P-I-L-O-T.com. Those are the two really good ones. And then sort by most recent. We'll see what's happening. Are you familiar with a point of sale system? I'm actually not. So it's called Curve. Do you know about that one? Curve? No. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one either. So. No. Nope, Phil, yeah. we don't know that one. Um, yeah. Let's see here. The website. Uh, um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So again, let me let me just kind of summarize, and then and then again, Slim, fill in the fill in the blanks, and correct me if I miss sure. something. Right. So so again, if you want to sell for Lavu, the way it works is Lavu has their own payment processing, Lavu Pay, that is integrated right into the point of sale. When you go and you make a sale, um, you can bring them, hey, this person's really interested. They'll do a demo, right? Then they'll schedule the install. They come out and do the install. Once it's installed and activated, you're getting a residual, right? Just like you would mm -hmm. if you sold the payments probably a as or better split than maybe you have now. Um, but again, remember, this is a company that's providing a ton of support and service. So there may be a little bit of a discount there, but you're getting lifetime vested residuals that you own, that you can sell, like just like you would get from an ISO. So it's, it's, that, it's that same kind of ISO comp experience, but it's with one integrated solution. Did I, did I say that right? That's right. Yeah, that's exactly okay. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. We so want to white glove it for you as much as possible. For sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, and again, you get rid of all this. You you, you kind of shift ninety percent of this complexity over to Lavu and let them deal with. Yes. You know, again, yes. the, the demo is like the, you know people don't talk enough about demos. So like the demos are hard. Like really. You I know, know. I know. Like if, if you're selling, you'd be surprised. Like they ask the you know? people, and, and every restaurant has their own workflow. Like right, they can ask the most particular questions. Like I'm learning something new like every day, and I've been here for over six years. Like yeah. the weirdest things like, you know, like we do it this way. And uh, do you do that? Well, Lavu is super highly customizable. So right. if we don't do it that way, you can customize it to do it that way. Right. It may not be pretty, but there's a way to do it. <laughs> um, and of course, a lot of people asking again about kind of training and demos and all that. Again, go to ccsalespro.com slash Lavu, fill that out. There's... um. Uh, I, I put a demo in there. We have another recorded demo that I did from with somebody at Lavu. Um, so we have all that in there, but we also have all the training. I mean, it's like a two, three hour video course that goes yeah, through everything yeah. that you, you want to know. So, um, Absolutely. how do you compare it to Aldello? You know, um, we don't see them much at all. I know it's very know. heavy with the, with the, with the bar community, the reseller community, but we don't see them at all. Like I have respect for them. I have respect for what they build, but um, you know, yeah. I feel like we're a much better integrated solution and offering that's better, faster, and cheaper. Um, so yep. that's my several, view. several people in here picked up on your, uh, you know, your 5% dual pricing. So we may need to follow up event for that. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, for sure. Hey, it's, you know, and now I, I will say the one I did, I did it 4%, but it, it generates, uh, over 200 basis points of margin. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, not yeah, too shabby. Which is still pretty good. Not, Not too, too shabby. shabby pays for your Lamborghini. Pays for your Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I don't have a Lamborghini in case anyone's wondering. But uh, <laughs> but, but no, it's like uh, you know I think they do. They're doing like sixty thousand a month in volume. I mean, so mm -hmm. uh, you know it's really. Yes. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much money. I mean, I remember I when when I used to sell a sixty thousand a month merchant. You know, I was like, hey, I'm making hundred bucks a month. This is great. You know, I now know. it's like, yeah. what in the world? It's like yeah. a twelve hundred dollar a month. You know, deal. So, um, yeah. let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm not getting all the compliance stuff on this one again. We'll, I've, I've done so much on the compliance stuff. I got kind of bored with that. We'll, we'll talk more later about that one. Um, okay. So Lavu does the install. What about, talk about the pride. This is really good too, to highlight this Celine, because this was another thing I was really impressed with. Talk about the process from yes to install. So we get a yes, but then mm -hmm. we got to get menus loaded. We got to train. We got to yeah. talk about more than just the install. What else do you guys do? What's the process like? So as soon as the yes happens, contract is signed. We um, work with the merchant to fill out the credit card application. Uh, they submit that. It goes through underwriting. That's approved. Uh, prior to that, we book a kickoff call with our onboarding team. And so you're not you're not wedded to one person. You have like an entire team. So there's a manager of a pod. There's five people. And then you have like a more senior person. And you have people who do like the menu entry. We collect the menu entry from napkins to PDFs to you know, Google documents and we, or we have to scrape it. 
we make sure we give you two or three, we give the merchant two or three opportunities to comment on whether or not it looks good. We ship the hardware. We make sure you have the hardware. If it's a lightweight solution, literally out of the box, it works. It's up and running in 30 seconds. Um, it's uh, We try to pre-configure it to your network if you have a Wi-Fi and, and whatnot. Uh, and then we send the installer out there to go in and do the installation. Sometimes it'll require a, a remote or in-person site survey where they ask you like what size it is. Do you have cabling? You know, where do you want the terminals? Do you have handhelds? Do you have a patio? A lot of these restaurants have patios. So that requires different access points. Um, and then from there, we, we don't leave you until uh, the customer goes live. Right? And we track that stuff every single day to make sure that that those those deals are going live. And then the re uh, residuals get paid 30 days uh, after the, the customer goes live. Um, so one one full month of processing. Uh, and then, you know, we're working with a handful of well-known providers in the industry to figure out which one we want to choose uh, for, you know, increased transparency and in billing so you can see your, your TPV and what your residuals potentially will be at the end of the month on a daily basis. Cause I know people like to track that stuff. Absolutely. Um, while you were talking, I was, I had to look up that video cause you're talking about this and um, I posted it in the chat. So if everybody wants to grab that, that's, that's a YouTube to the, if you didn't watch it yet, um, if you, if you want to scroll, even if you've already watched it, if you want to go to the end, you can see what the merchant actually said about what you just described. And that's right. he literally says, yeah, there was like a 21 point like checklist or whatever. Yeah, 21 point checklist. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, yeah. we, we went through it and it was, and again, I mean, to clarify, I had literally nothing to do with that at all, which yeah. I think yeah. is fantastic. I, I like, and it's funny because I think maybe even seven or eight years ago, Salim, I would have almost been a little bit like, hold on, like this is mm -hmm. my merchant, right? That kind of that yes. mindset. Yes. And right. but what I've come to learn is it's like that mindset is really bad for everybody. It's really bad for the merchant because yeah. they don't get what they need. They don't need you. I'm sorry, but they need Lavu. Like they don't need That's right. like my merchant that I sold. He needed me to uncover his challenges, his issues, mm -hmm. communicate mm -hmm. those issues to Lavu so Lavu could do a demo. And then he needed me to get out of the way and let Lavu yes. actually install this thing correctly. Right. And then that's right. Right. So, and again, I have a great relationship with this merchant and this merchant still considers himself my merchant and, you know, right. And it's local, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I have received, this is funny. I didn't think of this till now, Slim. We that, How long ago was that install? I mean, it was probably six months ago, I bet. Yeah. Six, seven months ago. Yep. Um, I have received zero phone calls. So I stop in there to eat lunch occasionally and like, Hey, and they're like, Oh, awesome. we love Lavu. Good. I received yeah. no phone calls. That's, awesome. that's great. Me, it's like, that's, that's awesome. a big win, you know? So, yes. Um, Cool. We, right, so so one thing, I, one thing I'll say, the last thing on that is yeah, like, please. we know that human restaurants and restaurant owners can be emotional, right? Yes. Uh, emotional and volatile. So that works for you and it can work against you, right? If you charge them five bucks more, they're going to be like, what the hell? I'm going to cuss you out. I'm right. going to leave. But we know the buying process for everybody, humans buy emotionally and then they use logic to justify the purchase afterwards, right? Right. So I tell my team, I said, you have one or two opportunities max to promise something and deliver against that promise as soon as a customer has bought because they're going to that's going to be forever ingrained in their in their head after they made the purchase right. so we send them good we send them food we send them goodies like chips candy to their to because you got to get their staffs buy in too right and so yep. these are all some of the things that we do to make them happy during the onboarding process that's great um, okay. I think we're gonna have to leave the rest of these questions. Well, again, if you asked a question that did not get answered, I apologize. I will. There was a lot of them. I'm going to send these over to the team at LaVue. I'm sure they'll be able to get back. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of your busy schedules to join. If you're watching the, um, uh, recording, I appreciate that as well. Uh, make sure and head over to ccsalespro.com slash LaVu, L-A-V-U. If you're watching or if you're uh, listening to this in your car, just go to YouTube and search for CC Sales Pro LaVu. You'll find my video there. And again, ccsalespro.com slash LaVu. Salim, always such a pleasure. I really appreciate you coming back after all this time to give us this update and, and helping us compete with Toast. I know that there are, well, you've talked, you and I've talked numbers. I mean, I know there is a lot of money being made by agents in this industry. And I really appreciate yes. you diving into something that was really kind of uncertain. This is a, a new channel. And now let's see if we can take that to the next level. So I appreciate you very much. And thanks for your time. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for, for stopping by. We really appreciate it.